I'm Brian Thomas Schmidt. This is Creator Talk. Every week, day, Monday through Friday, we meet at 7 o'clock right now, 15 minutes ago technically. But we're going to run for an hour tonight because we had technical difficulties. I will post the recorded shows up on a YouTube channel, uh, slightly edited just so we have uh, credits and so on on it. And uh, we're basically going to talk about writing and books. So I want to get started. Tonight's guest is author Rosemary O'Brien. She is a mystery author. And uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for finally having me. <laughs> uh, I, I had suspense because you're a mystery author. I had to have suspense and have technical difficulties. That's there really you go. All, Own it. It was all planned. That's why. Yeah. There that's... you go. It was a mystery whether you could come on or not. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> anyway, so Rosemary and I are part of a group called 20 Books to 50K, and that's one of the biggest conventions for independent authors, and it happens in Vegas. Um, it's the well, last several years. Next year, it's going to happen under a different name, and I don't even know what it is yet. I don't think they've announced it. So uh, at the end of the week on November 10th, that's in two weeks or so, at, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., you can come in for free, and you can get books from authors from all different genres. There'll be 300 of us there. There'll be some big names. There'll be some smaller names to discover. There'll be giveaways for things like Amazon's giving away Kindles. They gave away two or three Kindles last year. Uh, they gave away um, audiobooks from uh, from Blackstone and Podium and places. There's all kinds of giveaways going on. The authors will be doing some, some will be doing readings. Some will be also doing giveaways. So if you're anywhere near Vegas and you want to come out and you love books, you should definitely come to Rave 2023 at the Horseshoe Casino. And that is 10 to 4 on Friday the 10th of November. Anyway, so Rosemary and I will be part of that. And so, Rosemary, tell us about yourself. Tell us a little bit about um, who you are and how you became an author. Um, it's a kind of a drawn out story, but I'll make it quick. I got my BA in English and I realized I didn't want to be an educator, um, when I had about a year left. So I transferred to another school to be with my soon to be husband and ended up, uh, working a little bit here and there. And one of the groups I worked for was an author's group, or I guess they were independent journalists. Okay. And I was like, I was working with them and I kind of, I was an administrator and I was like, why am I doing this when I should be home writing my next book? Cause they had already written one right after after grad, which was terrible. It sits in the shelf and I'll get to it someday. But, <laughs> that's um, your trunk novel. Yes, yeah. exactly. Oh, that's a good one. Trunk novel. I like it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I started writing. I started writing my first book. I was published with a traditional, very small publisher in 02. And then probably took back my rights in about 05. And then uh, kids grew up a little bit and I was able to work better at home. They were in school and I took all my rights back and I started writing full time. And yeah. that was after, you know, a bunch of other jobs and whatever, when I finally realized, I don't want to do this for anybody else. I'm doing it for myself. So I took and everything how home. Books, how many books do you have out? Now? I have eight. Eight, eight okay. right now. And the trunk novel. And the trunk novel. Yeah, no, 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 no. The ones that are released, obviously. But yeah, trunk novel, that's a common industry term for, for the books you put away <laughs> and may never get back to, you know. I actually finished yeah. one of my, I revised one of my first novel, my first trunk novel. I just revised it. Actually, Mary Mayweather wanted to read it, so she's reading it. But um, I, I have several publishers that have, I've talked to about it, so it may become something. So it is possible to salvage that novel once you get a few under your that's, belt. That's you know. hopeful, because that was uh, women's fiction. And I published uh, two women's fictions. And then during COVID, I was playing with uh, Paranormal. And I ended up, actually, because of 20 books, uh, I was talking to them. The first novel was just out. And they said, or no, it was about to be out. And they said, you need a pen name um, for that. And, you know, we discussed it. And then uh, you need a series. So it's a three-book series now since then. Well, that's cool. You know, I mine was actually women's fiction too. I was a, I'm a bit, I am a big fan of Nicholas Sparks, and I wanted to write something like that. And uh, I wrote it, 
And then I just didn't feel, I just, I don't know, I just didn't feel it. It was, it was awful. It was a little bit short, about under 50K. And it was, I just felt like I hadn't developed things enough. So I put it aside and I started writing science fiction, which has been my lifelong passion. I don't know, I just, I really like those emotional, powerful stories. So that's why I wanted to write the, the, the love story. And um, I, I, I put it aside and I, I had a, a science fiction trilogy published that uh, the first book made your, Barnes & Noble years best. Then I came back to it and I started editing a bunch of anthologies and became known as an editor. And then I put out some other books, all of which have been kind of uh, thrillers. And then I, I said, you know what? I, I felt, then I fell in love again. I, after 12, you know, 10, 10, 12 years thinking I'd never have another chance, I got a second chance. So then all of a sudden I was interested in these kind of stories again. I mean, I've always read them, but, you know, writing them, I wasn't feeling like I, I understood them well enough. And so I pulled it out after I had written my first romance novel and polished that up with an editor. I pulled out Last Wish and polished it and sent it out. And now, you know, who knows what's going to happen, but... You know, I'm excited because I was able to save that story because it was a story that meant a lot to me. So anyway, it is possible. Um, so she's got some, you don't have any of those out yet, right? I do. I have uh, the trilogy out. Ghostly Command is the first one. Okay, it's under okay. R.K. O'Brien. And okay. then that's the pen name. It's similar, but, <laughs> but that's what I came up with. And um, Ghostly Passage is the second one and Ghostly Whispers is the third one. All right, so give us a quick elevator pitch of, I mean, obviously, what what is the premise here? Are, are the books, are, is it, does it, you have to start with book one, or are they separate stories with similar setting and characters that kind of, you know, like it passes on to the best friend, and then it passes on to, you know, that kind of thing? Yeah, no, you, could, you could start anywhere. Uh, Ghostly Command, and, and actually, I'll set up the premise again of the setting and everything with each book. But uh, the first one is about, um, she's a writer. It was easier. I was, like I said, I was playing around, then I kind of liked it. She's a, a divorced writer and she has a ghost in her house. And the ghost ends up trying to solve her own murder, even though somebody's in jail for that already. So there's a lot of twists and turns and um, she, well, I don't want to give anything away, but she's trying to solve her own murder. Then the second one is in the library. I write about West Haven, Connecticut, just because I like it. Fictional okay. West Haven, Connecticut, but it's a real place. Okay, and but this is the setting for all of your novels or just those? Nope, those three novels are West Haven. Okay. Actually, all of my novels, yeah, the first two, the women's fiction, ended up in West Haven as well. Because I missed it. Uh, the, the first trunk novel I wrote was West Haven, but like I said, it wasn't good enough. And then the one first one, one that was published is First Saturday, and that's a women's fiction, and that's set in West Haven because I was living elsewhere with my Navy husband, and I missed West Haven. So. And, and are you just, back in West Haven now? Are you back I there now? I am. I am. Okay. It just became a thing, and I'm starting work on my, my next novel, and I think I loved writing about goes so much that it's going to be another paranormal mystery. Um, yeah, you know, well, we got kind of sidetracked for the premise. We'll do that in a minute. But what I wanted to say about sorry. that is I, I love being able to do real research. I do location scouts for my settings. I yes. go out there. I, 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 I take a tape recorder. While I make notes about everything I see, feel, hear, taste, and touch, I have a recorder on, so I pick up stuff I don't even notice. And then I listen to how people talk. I see the, you know, what, who's coming, the ages and stuff. I make notes about all that stuff. And I often will talk into the recorder and make a few impressions as well. So that when I go home, I can, I, you know, I take a lot of pictures, like 360 degrees. So that when I go to an actual location, I can, I can look it up on Google map and jog, jog my memory and then figure out how to, how to describe it. Because, um, because yeah, I mean, it makes it real for people because there, somebody somewhere has been there. And, well, uh, that, you know, they pick it up, then they, they'll they feel like they really were there. It does. And um, the people, people started reading First Saturday again. I don't know why. I'm not more out in the community or anything. But um, all of a sudden, over the summer, it, it's known as a beach read somehow. Somebody made a review years ago, and Kirkus picked it up or something. And maybe they said it was a beach read. Well, that's but, good. I mean, that's good because yeah. those are the books that everybody goes out and buys in the summer when they're on vacation. So, hey, good for you. 
Absolutely. And, you know, like I said, I'm still working on, I'm working on, I'm a plotter. So I'm working on uh, plotting the next book. And I saw a house in West Haven that I really always look at, always think is really cool. And I kind of started thinking, huh, wonder if there are ghosts in there. And I wonder what it looks like in there. And, you know, yada, yada, yada. So the next book may be also set in West Haven. I just, my other like my home that I've always considered my home was New York. I lived there for another, a number of years, but I haven't been there in a long time to live. And I, I like the feel of, you know, like you said, people recognize it. And I, did you, did you actually knock on that door by the way of that house? I haven't yet. No, no, I did the Google thing. (laughs) I took some pictures across the street. I looked like a crazy person, but you know, Hey, I actually, you know, I did, I wrote, in one story, I made the home characters, main characters home, the home my parents lived into years ago when they lived in Kansas City. They're still there. And so my mom, desc- I had my mom, I pestered her with thousands of questions and she described it in detail. So I basically described the house. And then the this other house I used in Florida for my romance novel, I actually found a real estate listing and it had all the pictures. So Ooh. I just used the house. <laughs> yeah. I looked in I looked in Zillow, but they haven't sold it in a long time, so there's not there's not a lot yeah, of interior yeah, images. But yeah, I was thinking just today I might draw out the way I vis- envision it, you know. But I'm yeah. not that much of a, a artist, so <laughs> I'm well, gonna no, see. I, what I, I, I hear you, about. and it might be better that you don't. I mean, you know, honestly, I always wonder if I use a real address if somebody's gonna get mad at me someday because I sent all oh. these lurkers to their house. But you know. <laughs> No, I won't. I won't use the actual address. Uh, I'm going to come up with another name because it's a little tiny street. Yeah. And I'm going to I don't know. I think I'm just going to maybe one of my sons can draw it out for me. But I know exactly what the interior of the house looks like in my head. <laughs> so yeah, we'll, well maybe if you've got artists, you know, just describe it to somebody. They can draw it for you and you'll find yeah. stuff you didn't even realize was in your picture. So yeah, exactly. that's cool. So tell us the premise. Tell us the premise. We got an interrupted sidetrack there. Which one? Which one? Ghostly Command? Well, of the series, uh, yeah, yes. of the series that you were going to tell us the first, the, the first one is the premise I think yes. you were going to tell us. Yeah, the first one, she finds a ghost in her kitchen who is trying to solve her own murder. And it turns out she lives nearby and she died a few years ago. Uh, several years before but this woman was busy raising her children and didn't know you know didn't know any of these people um she grew up in the town but she moved back to the town so um was too busy with like i said with pta her own kids and she knew a woman died nearby but that she was going to find it in her kitchen she never thought that so uh then the next one is in the library. Uh, they find out some history about the library, and it, it all starts with a reference librarian, librarian who's hearing noises and just knows that she's investigated this other case and thought, you know, well, let me just see if this lady who always comes into the library will help me. So she ends up investigating the West Haven Library. Gotcha. And uh, the third one turns out to be there's an old... I went to the school in, in uh, middle school, but there's an old school that is now a bunch of apartments. So there was always um, a rumor amongst the kids that they thought one of these music rooms was haunted. So that's the basis of another one. I know, right? No, I'm going to have people because all my over. Junior, my old junior high got turned into apartments to senior living oh. accommodations. And I wrote a couple of stories there too. And, but I'm trying to remember, I know there were some ghost stories about the basement, but I didn't hear them specifically. The big ghost story for us was the phantom pooper. There was somebody who was, <laughs> who was going around defecating in classrooms and nobody ever figured out who it was. Oh my <laughs> so God. The teachers would come in in the morning and find it and have to clean it up oh. before class. And I was just thinking about that day. I brought it up, and we have a high school reunion group on uh, on Facebook, and I brought it up and said, does anybody remember? Because there was this lady that was caught doing it in Florida on her run. She was <laughs> pooping on people's yards. I said, does anybody remember the Phantom Pooper? And it, it turns out I not very many people knew about it. I'm, I'm kind of surprised. But anyway, that wow. that's, a, that's a different kind of ghost, I guess. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyway, be... so tell us. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
uh, the third one where there's, you know, in the school, there's a Ouija board involved. These kids are playing with oh, a Ouija okay. board and they stir up all this stuff. And turns out there probably was a ghost in that school. And nobody listened well, to Well, there you go. So tell yeah. us about, I'd like to hear about um, how you got into writing. I mean, I obviously you wanted to be a writer. You started writing, you said, um, before you ever really considered yourself a writer, um, when you were doing other things, you were like, I should be writing. How, how did you, I mean, have you always wanted to be a writer? I have always written things. And when I was in high school, my girlfriend um, suggested I could write poetry. And I said, well, I don't like to rhyme and whatever. And she said, you don't have to. So I ended up writing prose. And actually, poetry was the first thing that I was ever published in. And it was just, you know, a couple of community things. They published me, you know, they picked me anonymously or picked my pieces. Right, right. So my teacher in that last undergrad school said, um, he was so funny. I gave him some poems. I knew he was a poet at heart. And I gave him some poems to read on a flight to France. He was going there to do something. He called me from a pub somewhere and said, you need to put these in a book. And, I, you know, I was flattered, but... This was, geez, 90s, you know, so there it wasn't, wasn't so easy to put out a book then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. And so um, actually I did that during COVID too. I mean, not that COVID messes with the self-publishers, you know, schedule much, but I just thought, well, everybody else is playing around. Let me see what else I can come up with. So I took my poetry, um, put some of it in a book and well, threw you. that out. And I mean, it does okay. It's just poetry doesn't really sell well, a lot. Well, the, the way COVID did mess with 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 self publishers and everybody was not only with people's budgets and financial concerns, but the paper shortage, and that was yeah. a huge problem. So printers were really slowed down, and they're still catching up. I'm still at. I placed a rush order for twenty books that isn't going to be that they sent sent to me. They sent me the wrong books. It's screwed up. I have to reorder. I'm not going to have them for twenty books. I have other copies luckily but i won't have as many as i planned so it's 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 they're still and they're still blaming the paper shortage even though it took them a month to fulfill a rush order you know i was yeah. like i paid extra for this what is the point it, i could have waited a month on normal speed so it, it it happens you know but anyway i don't want to be too negative here all i'm just saying is that these kind of problems do happen so if you see a book delayed there are all kinds of things that go on behind the scenes that can happen and it's not always the author's fault i was lucky <laughs> I was lucky. Yeah. I got my books. Uh, I was waiting. I had the first two books of the series recovered. And then, because I did just, they just didn't fit. This also happened with oh, the 20. So she did, what she's talking about is is she, she kind of uh, rebranded herself. She put new covers on there for the books just to make sure. She didn't recover them like recover a file or yeah. take them out of the trunk. I just wanted to make that clear. No. <laughs> No, no, I put new covers on them because I was, when I was discussing in uh, 20 books, with 20 books people, um, in ad school actually, uh, they were saying, you know, this doesn't really read well. I learned a lot. I learned a lot more directly because of 20 books. So I got the first two covers done while I was writing the third book. And then the third book, I was able to guide them better to what I wanted the cover to look like. And I was praying to God it would be the correct covers because I ordered the I ordered a copy each of the first two books and got the old covers. <laughs> and I emailed Amazon and said, what the heck? These aren't the covers that are showing on Amazon. I want my, my people who are going to order to get the new covers. So it turned out uh, Amazon keeps, you know, literally probably one or two copies somewhere of the yeah. old cover when they're when they're done with those then they'll send out the new cover so i complained enough that um and and then ended up placing the order and got a box of the correctly covered books thank god in time so i will have them <laughs> well the other problem that the other problem that can happen is that when you have another version of a book they attach the two together because of the same which is helpful with the reviews but then people never know what they're getting they don't know which version they're getting when they they order so that somebody could be reselling an old version and they end up with the old version and you know it's 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 complicated but anyway so um what about craft i mean how did you learn um learn to write did you go to say that in school I did i well i went for an english degree and you learn more about literature that way but then when i transferred i went to 
I transferred to San Diego State. That was my last school. And that's where I found my mentor, the guy that called me from the pub, and yeah. uh, okay. learned a lot from him because I would hand him pages. I would talk craft with him. Um, I was reading a lot of good stuff. His stuff was wonderful. And I just thought, why? And that's not even when I got to the point where I got serious. I got serious um recently i was in my one of my last jobs last maybe three years um and i just looked around and i said i'm ne i got a degree in, in intelligence and i thought i'm never gonna actually write a report in my lifetime because i'm still at the bottom rung and they say it's a stepping stone but i don't see it so i said to my husband i may be quitting monday <laughs> i hope that's all right and I did, because I just said, I want to write. I was writing at night when I was at my desk, writing the next book, writing the next outline or the right. plot or whatever. And I wasn't into what I was doing. Now, wait a minute. Let me ask you. Okay. First of all, let me remind everybody, please like the the live. It helps us get more audience and it helps us keep going. So please tap the screen and give us those likes. You can give uh, up to 90 each, and I just like to myself 90 times, so half of them are mine. So please do that. Also, please follow me, Paul, our guest, and we will be making these shows. I'll be making them five days a week. You can definitely want to check out Rosemary's books. Um, so thank you for that. Thank you. If you guys give any um, little uh, gifts and we don't notice, I appreciate that as well. Thank you for that. I'm going to use any gifts I get, hopefully, toward future giveaways and things like that as the show develops. Um, anyway. Back to our conversation, Rosemary. I was curious. You said you got a degree in intelligence, like like spying intelligence. I did. Um, I have I a didn't degree know there in was digital a degree. forensic investigation. Okay, I didn't know yeah. there was a degree in that. That's why there I was, is. I was... Yeah, and how long? Yeah, that, was that I got my master's. Or was that a recent thing. That was in 2018, but I went to work for one company, and it it, it I realized. I wasn't going to get promoted. There was a lot of ageism going around. It was just crazy. I'm I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but I'm about no, probably your age. Could even be older. I'm 54. <laughs> I'm 54. I don't hide. I hide it with my hair dye, but that's it. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm 60. I'll fess up. I'm 60. And I was with very, very smart new grads, but I was a new grad at like 54 at the time. Okay. So I experienced a lot of, ageism in that I wasn't being told that extra information or I wasn't being promoted. Uh, so I left and then I got this other job and I just realized that I wasn't, a, I wasn't going to spend years getting to where I had studied, which was to be an intelligence analyst. Yeah. So, um, that's when I left that one, but yeah. Um, I just, I went back to school. My, my husband has uh, cancer. I'm sure you've all heard about Camp Lejeune. So um, oh, he's no. fine. He's, oh, he's doing no. great. He's been with us eight plus years, which is wonderful. And um, I just thought I'm going to go get my master's so I could be the financial head of the family, which just didn't happen. But my royalties are going up and up and up, and I'm very grateful that I'm home. I'm here to be with the family if I need to be, and I can rearrange my own schedule, which is the most wonderful thing in the world. Oh, my point. God, it is. I, Isn't it? I yeah. love that. You know, it's like people are like, do you take a yeah. day off? I said, no, because when I want to take a day off, I'm taking several. So I work every yeah. day. That way I don't feel guilty when I have to go, when I go to Vegas and I want to get some education for my business, which is working, but not writing and whatever, you right. know? Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. So well, they, your husband, people your husband say, was military? Oh, go ahead. Yes, he was. He was in the Navy. Okay. He was in the go. Navy. And that's go. why I was in, uh, that's why I was working for the writers group because I hadn't had kids yet. So I was trying to figure out what to do. With an yeah. English degree. <laughs> and like, you know, <laughs> there's not a lot to do with an English degree. Gotcha. So um, when I did my master's, I was writing, but sort of, you know, I had been to, no, I was about to go to 20 books. Oh, no, right after 20 books, I got that other job, which lasted about six months. But um, I had already been to 20 books. I had been inspired. I met other people who were doing this and making a living from it. And I felt confident enough to leave the job. 
And where did you know, now, how many times have you got a twenty book? Twenty books has been around for a bit, but it's only yeah. it only came on my radar the last four or five years. Um, this will be my third one coming up. I went in okay. twenty one. I found it. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I, Mary Mayweather has been there. Like she was there when it was nothing. When it was like a really tiny little group. So um, yeah. um, it's really really grown. This is the convention that we're doing the signing at everybody the rave event that'll be November 10th in, in Vegas coming up in two weeks. So just FYI, that's what we're talking about. Uh, the, there's a larger convention where we get to meet with Amazon and Blackstone and, and take a bunch of classes and learn about marketing and learn about writing and talk to people who are successful about how they do it, learn about advertising and ads and all these kind of things that we do before we do the signing. But the end of the thing is a, is this big signing that's open to the public. So, uh, yes. If anybody wants to go to the convention, you have to buy a membership. You'll have to probably, I don't know if, I don't know if they're still selling them this year or not. They are, but costs have gone up. So you kind of have to plan ahead, but it's, it's an annual thing now. So um, it's so, certainly something you can participate in. You just need to uh, look into the uh, 20 books to 50 K on Facebook. Um, anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah. So you're, I'm sorry. I, uh, you were going to ask me a question or something when I was talking about working at home. Um, no, I was going to say, it's funny. My husband says, um, when I say, well, I'm going to work on Sunday, I've got some stuff to do. He says, why don't you take a day off? And I'm like, <laughs> you don't understand. I love this. I love sitting at my desk on Sunday. I don't think I've ever, I've ever had a job job that I've loved, but I yeah. pull into my office, my home office, whenever I feel like it. And I love it. Yeah, I no, mean, it is the greatest thing. I'm actually building a new office in the in the garage right now. I'm in the middle of construction because I'm 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 getting married again, and I have two teenagers moving in. So I had to give up my office so so that there's three bedrooms in the house, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm really excited about it. It's kind of a refresher for me to use. I haven't been using the office in this house near as much as I should. Uh, I got bad habits during COVID, but you know when I used to use my office, it was great. You can go across the hall. You're in an office. It looks just like an actual office, professional <laughs> office somewhere. I've got a copy machine and printer mm -hmm. and uh, scanner and all that stuff set up and all the you know research books and everything and all my books. All it looks basically like the picture behind me, basically, uh, around the walls and uh, everything I need. There's a there's a Alexa in there to play music. I've got a TV in there if I need to catch some news whatever, but I sit there and I write and it's the greatest thing because whether it, the, the only, the only advantage I have over a real office is if I want to go there in my boxers, I could go in my office in my boxers. But other yeah. than that, once I move it out of the house into the garage, I don't think that's going to be happening. I don't think I'm going to walk through my yard in my boxers. But the point is, you know, it, it, it makes you feel like it is a business and you really do have to treat this as a business if you want to succeed. Yes, I totally agree. Um, that's what 20 books has given me too. I mean, I just, I know more about the facts and figures, what I'm looking for in royalties, what I'm looking for in ads, all of that. Um, yeah. And I, you know, I'm always, I've always been a self-taught person, but getting it from people who are doing it and, and successful is very helpful. Any of oh, these, I look at, I look at TikToks, I look at webinars, I learn from everybody I can, but you do have to treat it like a business. It is a business. If you, you want to be successful. And it's, you know, I also find, for me at least, part of it may be my ADHD, but if I let my discipline slack in one area of my life, then everything slacks. And so if I want to be steady writing, I'm like, I've been struggling lately because I've had so much going on with bringing my family here from the Philippines and, and all these innovation, renovations in the house and all this stuff. It really, really plays with my time. My exercise kind of died away because it was so hot this summer. So, you know, I've noticed that creep in my writing. So I, I have to get back on those things because the more disciplined I am, the more I write, the better I succeed. Yeah. And, and all of that is part of it. And literally there is I, whenever somebody tells me I don't have time to write, I say, yes, you do. You just don't make time. Because the reality yes. of it is this. You could write, if you could find 10 minutes a day, you could find mm -hmm. three 10-minute slots a day easily where you waste time where you could sit down and write. Even if you only get 100 words, if you do it three times a day, you got 300 words. Truthfully, even if they're crap, until you get it down on the page, you, you haven't started anyway. So what are you worried about? You can revise it later. The main issue is get the words down. And so when people make excuses like that, they say, you know what, you're really not trying hard enough if you can't find time to write. If you really want to do it, you got to sit down and do it. Button chair, that's the only excuse. 
Well, I think, too, when I was in Virginia, um, I'm trying to think which – we were in two different places in Virginia. But that's where I discovered NaNoWriMo, too. And I got 50,000 words done. I mean, they were crappy, and I had to redo most of them. But I got the story out of my head and onto the page, which is what I always tell students to do when I teach, you know, writing a novel. Um, just You just have to get it out of your head onto the page, even if it's complete junk. Then you can fix it later. And yeah. NaNoWriMo, God, that's such a great thing. I mean, especially if you go sit in a coffee shop with a bunch of others and you're just tapping away at your computer. You're still yeah, with like-minded people. You can participate in the writing sprints on TikTok. People go live and all they do is write with their friends. It's boring yeah. to watch, but for them, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's peer encouragement and motivation to, to write. So you'll see five yeah. or six people on a live and they're not saying anything, but they're all sitting there typing. That's what they're doing. It'll say writing sprint on it. So that, that happens all the time too. And I imagine it's going to be more in November when the NaNoWriMo happens, which for those who might not know who are watching us, NaNoWriMo is National Novel Writing Month. It happens every November. The goal is 50,000 words, and people everywhere try to write that novel, try to get over the hump of writing the first novel, or try to work on something and get some real word count in. Um, 50,000 is a short novel. In romance, it, it, it can work occasionally in mystery. In science fiction, it's very short. It's probably more of a novella, uh, mm -hmm. just, just above a novel. In, uh, in thrillers, it's pretty short. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm saying you, you might just get a good start on a novel. You, you have to be realistic about it. The market may demand a little bit more, but that's okay. Because if you, if you write, uh, you write. And then you need to do whatever you can to write. Um, yeah, I had a couple questions. I, I am going to open this up to questions. There are questions I do not want to get into. They're controversial. There was a question about chat GBT. Uh, the only thing I'm going to say about chat GBT, and Rosemary, you can comment if you want to, but the only thing I'm going to say about that is that is a tool. That is not writing. If you tell chat GPT to write your story, you're not writing a story. Chat GPT is making up a story, and it's not actually written by you, and you shouldn't claim it to be. For me, that's the difference. If you use it as a research tool, like I've gone in there and had it tell me everything you know about a particular topic, and I can use that as, to help me with my research. But I always double-check the source. Sources. I always double check. I always go out and look for other sources that back it up because uh, everything I put in there, people are going to expect me to know what I'm talking about. And if you're making something up and it's clear you're making it up, that's a different thing. But when you're talking about real people and real locations, the facts do matter. You should have the respect to get that right. So that's my philosophy. If other people have a different philosophy. That's fine. But that's the only thing I'm going to say about chat GPT at this point. I agree. Yeah. Um yeah, yeah. I've used it because the next novel, I'm toying with the idea of she's going to open a restaurant. It's it's um, going to be, I don't know. I don't know a lot about that. I've worked in them, but I don't know about building one and, you know, building up the kitchen or whatever. Right, so right. I've used chat GPT to do some research on it, but I'm also talking to a restaurateur next week. I'm not going to just chance that, you know, chat GPT got it right. But it's yeah, a, it's exactly. it is a good tool, you know. If you, you check have to up keep on. in mind, you have to keep in mind that ChatGPT, the way that they trained it was to basically observe entire books from authors. There's a whole lawsuit going on, and there's going to be a lot of stuff with it. So basically, it writes based on the knowledge that it has, which means it is taking, it's taking intellectual property and trademark voice and things from other authors and put it in your book. That is not you writing a book. There, no. Everybody has a unique voice. I, Rosemary and I could sit here right now and make up a concept and we could each start writing it and you would see a very different book emerge because she has a different yeah. voice and I have a different voice. Now, even if we came up with similar ideas, the way that we execute it, the way that we bring it out is going to be different. So developing your own voice is very important. You can't do that when you rely too much on tools. Now, there are tools that people use all the time. Grammarly is a great way to, to kind of self-edit your book, not without an editor looking at it, but it can help you fix the grammar and proof and things like that, find where you're repeating words, where you're doing too much echoing, all of that kind of stuff. Very, very useful. But an editor is going to, and this is what I do for a living. So this, I can tell you, I'm a professional editor. I make most of my living from editing. 
you, you need somebody who can go in there and give you the human element about the emotions of the story and the arcs and and does this work and 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 you know are the are the beats in the right place that's not something chat G, rpg can really do rpt whatever it is can do for you <laughs> you have to have a human touch yeah. so that's why relying yeah. on these tools needs to have a certain concept um so mm -hmm. I mean, getting a main, there's somebody saying, you can get a main concept from AI, sure. You know, AI has uses. I love, I love all the templates and filters on here. I have a lot of fun playing around with it. Some of you guys see me on my live at night when I'm screwing around and I put on a different face or I put on something funky like this and I'm sitting there looking like this. <laughs> or I put on a, a woman's makeup or I look like a zombie or something. I love that. Or I'm eating watermelon, you know. <laughs> See, I love that stuff. It's great. It has a purpose. It, it's fun. And that's the context for which we should keep in mind when we're using AI, I think. For my personal, yes. um, I, there, there are rules now from publishers and Amazon too, that if you don't, if you use it and there's no human author involved up to a, at least a certain percentage, you know, you can't publish it there. And um, I think that's part of the preserve the integrity of human artistry. But anyway, enough about that question. I'm here supposed to be interviewing Rosemary. So if you have writing questions or questions about her books, by all means, feel free to say it. I noticed that Silvana, who is also an author down here in my uh, in my comments, Silvana, Silvana's a TikTok author, check her out. Um, Silvana Candel Candela. Um, you were talking about writing in, in coffee shops. I have done that. I'm actually a very fortunate writer in that I can get a few words anywhere. I, I, I use I use Scrivener, and I have it connected via Dropbox to my phone, my iPad, and my laptop. So anytime I save the file and close it, I can open it immediately somewhere else and start working. So if I have to go to the doctor's office, take my phone, sitting in there waiting, and I feel like writing or I'm in the middle of a scene, I'll just go in and fiddle around with it a little bit while I'm waiting for the doctor, and I can make progress that way. That's the beauty of tools. Speaking of tools, Rosemary, what tools do you use to write? Well, I was going to recommend Plotter. It's P-L-O-T-T-R, no E. That bugs me. But when I, when I get to my story, um, it's kind of cool. I'm playing with it now just to keep the structure of the outline. But um, And I, I copy it up to the cloud to Google, Google Drive or something just because you never want to lose anything like that. But Plotter, um, I believe it's paid for. I got it on a deal or something, a yearly thing. And it gives yeah, you many um, They templates. give it away at 20 bucks. They give away discounts at 20 bucks. Maybe you got it there. I don't know. Uh, I don't remember. But um, it has many different templates you can use, um, you know, like the, what, uh, the six beat story or something like that. And it gives you a lot of interesting... Um, guidance i don't really use the guidance because you know i i have my own way of of plotting but it's a good place to lay everything down and you have it when you're ready to work the next time and then you could print it all out and look at the outline and see if it makes sense to you but i like that um do you use i mean do you use scrivener at all because scrivener has that an outlining tool too which i find handy but no. i know plotter is specifically designed for it I'm going to look at Scrivener, though, because I've heard other people mention it. And I like the fact that you can finish what you're doing and then carry it to your other devices. Because I, I take a pen and paper everywhere because there's always something coming into my mind. Or I'll put it on my phone in my notes, which I don't like as much. It's a very tiny little computer. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. If, I, if I write it with my pen in my notebook, um, then I can really kind of nuke out whatever I'm trying to figure out and get it yeah. to my next book because i mean i sounded like crazy person the the restaurant tour i was talking to was my brother and i called him and i said do you have any time like next week to just sit with me and answer questions without the spouses around not going to dinner just sit there with a beer and talk about my idea and and what you can add to it as a restaurant tour and yeah. um he, I just said to him at one point, I sound like a crazy person. I'm telling you about this non-existent woman and what's happening in her non-existent house and business, but that's what's going on in my head. And he was like, that's why I'm a reader. I think you guys are cool. 
Yeah, you know, you know it's, it's 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 an interesting and crazy business. That everybody has stories. I mean, a lot of so many restaurants fail. I think I'm yes. sure he didn't mind. But you know, one of the, uh, one of the things about Scrivener is it's like twenty five, thirty bucks, I think. And um, I think I paid a, another like ten or fifteen bucks for the version on my iPad and my iPhone. But um, it's great because um, of that. But it's also there's there's you can put stuff in. Uh, you make little folders and you make little scenes underneath it. And they're separate files, so you can literally drag and drop them. If you like, if you decide that scene just doesn't work there, and you move it somewhere else, you can literally drag it there. And all you have to do is adjust it. You don't have to cut and paste. The other thing you can do is you can drag it into a, you know, scenes I can't use folder that so you don't throw it away or lose it. It's just sitting there, and you pull it for another book, or you decide you know don't use it, but you never lose it. I also put research notes in there. I put photos in there in a research file, all of which you determine what is going to actually print in the final manuscript, because then you can convert it to Word and send it over in various formats to Word, and some of that stuff just stays in Scrivener. So that that's why I find it handy. It's a very good database. It also has a little note card system and has some outlining tools and all that. But yeah, I mean, I've heard great things about Plotter, and I think I'm not a pl- I'm not a heavy plotter. I'm more of a, I need to know the three-act structure, but what are the key seven points that I need? As long as I know those, I can write my book. And I outline a little bit ahead in, in, in the, each chapter as I go, the scenes that I expect to see. And the more further I go in the book, especially with my mysteries and thrillers, the more I start outlining a little bit about what I think is going to happen. But, you know, like in this current book I'm writing, that's, a, that's a, my first noir, like straight non-sci-fi mystery thriller, I didn't even know who the bad guy was. And I, I, I thought he was going to be one guy, and it ended up being somebody else because things changed. Um, yeah. So I'm a bit more organic. But it's also really nice to not be too tied to it. And, but for some people, that's the way it works. And I think I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything against outlining. For me, it doesn't work as well if I have it too rigid because I really feel like I, I need the flexibility to just go with the story. Do you have, how do you handle that? I just fix things. If I have the outline in front of me and I read through it and I see something else I'll jot it in there and even when I'm writing if I if I'm writing a scene and then I go oh wait no this is better you know having this guy as this character instead of you know this other person I'll just look at the whole scene and spend you know spend some time rewriting it to and then I have to alter the rest of it of course but which is kind of the only tedious part but i still find that um i'd rather do that if i find something rather than lose it i don't want to say no i'm not going to do that because i'm already right, writing no, it no. this way definitely not no, we, no, did have, we, we did have an interesting question down here uh film uh turn who's a friend of mine was asking if you learned to put secret codes in your books from intelligence school <laughs> Uh, no, no. I have a degree in digital <laughs> forensic investigation, so I can look in a, a computer in the back matter of the computer. I can, I know where to go to research um, things in the country, for instance. A lot of that's behind paid firewalls, but still, I can, I can find a way to find the information, um, and that's really what I wanted to do in my career and it just it it just wasn't to be so and i research anyway all the books that i do well I mean, the digital forensics obviously comes in handy when you're research, researching a novel <laughs> oh it sure does it really yeah. does um i've always done that though but i just learned a better way to do it in school yeah you got your skill set um, you got a better skill set for it sure i do and then the the university just sent me i they they enrolled me in some webinar i'll be at 20 books so i won't be going but some webinar to find out about the doctorate and i was thinking an old professor of mine from this program said i should become a doctor at it you know get my phd but i don't know i feel like i'm really enjoying writing and i'm applying all of that knowledge to my research for my books you know I wonder if a class for, on digital forensics might be something that 20 books would like in the future. It might be interesting. I don't know if you feel comfortable. Ooh. Oh, that's but, an idea. But but you know what? I've often thought about doing a class on research. I think research mm-hmm. techniques are very important. I've actually lectured a few times on it, and, it, and it, it's really helpful to learn different tools of doing it. Like a lot of people don't do, do the location scout thing, so I often talk about oh. that. It's something I started doing. I learned it from when I was a, in, in film school, but it's mm-hmm. so helpful. Even if... 
Even if you're writing a book that is not in the same place, it's somewhere else. Go to a coffee shop. What does the coffee shop smell, taste, sound like? Then you can write your coffee shop much more authentic than if you if you if you haven't been to a coffee shop in years and you're just trying to remember. You know all those because you know the five senses, the visceral stuff, is yeah. really really what makes it feel real. So I tend you know, to. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, no, I, it's fine. I tend to fill out too. I tend to go and say there's not enough location and I'll fill it out, you know, make the, and it, it adds, I mean, I think I did that during one of the NaNoWriMo's to add words, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. it turned out to be a really good tool because you do need all of that. You do need all the senses to make the story pop. Right. You know? Here's somebody asking if, is there a favorite scene or character from one of your books that you would like to talk about? Oh, wow. I... That's like asking somebody to pick their favorite child. I hope you know that, Silvana. But anyway. I know. <laughs> that's so not fair. I like your name, by the way, <laughs> Silvana. That's a pretty name. Um, I just, I couldn't because it would give away part of the story if I did that. Okay. okay. So your, your mysteries. Um, is there a particular subgenre of mystery that you write? Um. It's considered paranormal cozy mystery, and I paranormal cozy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, lately I've discovered a good category in Amazon. It is ghost suspense. People are finding okay. it that way. <laughs> so if you That's mention because paranormal, a lot of paranormal is shapeshifters and vampires and romance. Believe right. it, or not, I don't even know. I've got to find one of those books to to see what that's about. Paranormal romance, but. Um, I found that I needed people to know these are ghosts. It's just flat out, flat out ghosts. The woman can hear and see the ghosts. That's, you know, that's yeah, what it is. So yeah. I came upon ghost suspense. That seemed to make more sense to me than paranormal cozy mystery. But that's, that's another well, one. That's another Because good paranormal thing. is such a broad term. You're right. I mean, there's werewolves yeah. and all of these different creatures that fall into that. Whereas ghost suspense really nails it down. We're dealing with ghosts. We're dealing with suspense. So yeah, I know yeah. I get it. Um, for those who don't know that cozy mysteries tend to be mysteries that don't get into the nitty gritty of um, things like uh, autopsies or or uh, yeah. uh, dead bodies and, and violence and different things near as much as the, like the, the things I write are all noir and they're gritty. And I, I do get into a lot of detail. No, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go to the point of gross. That's, that doesn't interest me, but I definitely don't um, shy away from the, uh, the, the hard realities. Um, so anyway, that's the difference. And, and, and cozies have been popular for a long, long, I mean, that's what Jessica Fletcher used to, you know, be known for in the, in, in the, what was that, what was that show? Uh, Angela Lansbury as, um. No, I can't think of it either. Why am I blanking on that show? It was so famous. Anyway, but, you know, uh, <laughs> Agatha Christie, a lot of these old school authors write this kind of stuff. Whereas I go more toward the Dashiell Hammett uh, and that kind of stuff. So um, it's perfectly valid, different categories. And Murder, She Wrote, thank you, Murder, She Wrote. Mm -hmm. And then there's, um, so there's any, anyway, just to give you a perspective. Uh, we've mm -hmm. got about eight minutes left. So if anybody has some final questions, you should ask that. I don't want to forget to ask you, Rosemary, how people can find you, other than, of course, looking up your books on Amazon, finding you here on TikTok. And for that, please follow her on TikTok. Rosie, R-O-S-I-E-B, right? Author Rosie B.? Author Rosie Ob, Author Rosie Ob, Ob, of course. Rosie Ob. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I'm all about the B because I'm Brian, of course. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Oh, I, I forgot the Ob. Um, so, uh, where can they find you online? Otherwise, online it would be uh, the website is Author Rosemary O'Brien with no apostrophe, no spaces, nothing. And it's O'Brien O B R I E N. Don't spell it like my name. Yes. And also, uh, do you have, uh, she's on Facebook, I know, because um, we're Facebook friends. And uh, you, do you have X or other uh, social media? I do. I think Facebook and, well, Facebook, I have the author page. But my personal page, I look at much more often. It's Writer O'Brien, and that's the same as X. Okay. And, and also Instagram? Do you have Instagram? I do. I'm thinking it's Writer O'Brien as well. <laughs> <laughs> they, you know, a lot of people do that, though. It's very easy to find you, and that's fine. Yeah. So, yeah, guys, check that out. Uh, thanks again for the likes and the, all that, and, and, and the people who gave, um, uh, I know at least one person, 
Oz gave you a nice big gift. You got uh, a nice big gift up there. So uh, uh, appreciate that. That's what the little numbers in the corner of your screen are. I assume you know that, but just in case you didn't know, the two yeah. or three up there. Uh, so what other things, what advice would you give to people who want to be writers and, uh, and uh, are up and coming? Uh, would you have any advice you want to share? I would say exactly what you said before, make time to write. I had a student show up at a, a I don't even know, an adult ed class with like a 500 page book. And it was an excellent story. It had to do with uh, his escape from Laos and um, his family there. It was brilliant. Uh, he lost interest in it, but he wanted to publish it. And he also had English was a second language, but he did wonderfully in it. He was fantastic. And he still hasn't published that damn book. And it's, it's a shame because that, that tells me he's not a real writer. He just had a story, but he's not a real writer. If you're well, a real not yet, writer, not yet at right. least he hasn't. The muse hasn't quite risen enough in him. Yet. Yes, but it was a great story. I mean, it was a mess. It needed lots of editing, but it was would be a great story. But what you have to do is write. Storytelling is a craft, and if you have a good story, yeah. learn the best way to tell that story so that other people will read it. You have to be to some degree within the confines of the reading community. You have to know what people are going to buy, what people, you know, even as far as the book cover, for goodness sake, that yeah, you have to, so much better since I recovered them. You Re have to know, you have to know that there are certain expectations. There are certain tropes yes. that people look for. There are certain things that are popular. Um, so you have to understand the market before you can actually write something that's marketable. And yes. that's, that's important. But there's also a lot of writing advice out there. The only thing I'm going to say about writing advice is to say that writing advice is a bit like a butthole. Everybody has some. <laughs> and the only thing that is valid for you is the stuff that you don't have to wipe off and throw away. Everything right. else you just ignore. Okay. So the way that I approach it works for me. The way that Rosemary approaches it works for her. We have two very different approaches because she's, she's a heavy plotter and I'm not. I write right. books. I'm successful. She's probably a little more successful than I am at this point, but she writes a lot of books. But nonetheless, the point is, it gets the job done. Whatever gets the job done is great, but you do need to know how to format your manuscript. You do need to know how, know how to, pre to present it. You do know how to, how to organize your thoughts in a way that, that is, is, you know, that things look like people expect them to so that they can be come in and join you. There are certain things that you do have to know that everybody kind of has to comply with that are not flexible. So you just need to take the time to learn the difference. We have one more question that somebody's asking I'm going to take, and then we will wrap things up. What kind of content can an author make on TikTok, Rosemary? Whew, I'm learning that myself. That's why I have no followers. <laughs> I'm just watching. Um, I think um, you can just show a book cover. You can show your book cover, and you can come up with a pithy caption on it someone i know just asked for i don't even know her she uh asked for arc readers advanced readers and her yes. post went viral you saw that it, her post went viral and i don't know if i saw like, the same one but i see them a lot yeah yeah no she uh she's got like 6200 and she was asking advice you know what do i do do i give them all a book yeah of course you do um but I've seen people do things that are throwing books across the room and then making it fly. I don't know. People do different things. There are, but, well, there's special effects you can use. Yes. Kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of stuff. You can just come on and say, hi, I'm, oh, I know another author who, uh, she's a lady I met at 20 books last year. She just came on and said, hi, if you want to learn more about, and she named her character, come to whatever place she was signing that weekend. And yeah. I mean, there's just you a million could, things. Book talk yeah. is the place to look. Yeah. I mean, I did book trailers on here. I've done trailers for Rave. Rosemary was in one of those mm -hmm. where I put a little, I used a, a program called CapCut to edit things together. And you can make some really professional looking things. They, they're not perfect, but you can certainly make them look suitable enough that, that, that you don't have to be embarrassed about them. And you can do little things like I'm doing, like an interview show where I'm basically helping promote other authors while making, letting you know who I am at the same time. So there's all kinds of things you could do to answer that question. There, I also do like to do funny videos and play with filters. You've seen that. Because uh, I like to make people laugh. And then I, I will ask you to buy my book. I'll read, read from my book. And frankly, talk about my book. Because I find that a lot of people really like to hear your personal 
connection to your book and what your what made you write it what was the emotional connection behind it that kind of stuff so that's all stuff you can do too you could so do I, anything uh, that you took the jump and i didn't that's amazing <laughs> <laughs> well yeah. i i went to film school when i was a kid and i hosted uh uh, uh one of the first live writer chats on twitter so I have a little leg up in that, that I have a lot of experience dealing with both yes. things. So that made me confident to jump in a little more. But yeah, and the way I got a thousand followers, honestly, Rosemary, yeah, I did it in 10 days. And the way that I did it was I went around and followed every book talker I could find. Some mm -hmm. followed back, some didn't. Eventually I culled some of that out just to keep my feed clean. And mm -hmm. then some people decide I'm interested again, they come back, I follow them. And, uh, and I started commenting on, on people's posts and retweeting everything I see about books that I think, like if somebody's trying to promote their book, I'll, re I'll repost it. I'll repost, you know, hey, I'm looking for ARC readers. I'll repost things in Signal Boost and just being a good member of the community. And that's how I got there. So I think that's the easiest way to find followers, folks, is just participate. And so mm -hmm. I want to thank Rosemary for coming on and for being patient enough to put up with all the hijinks <laughs> at the beginning. I apologize again to everybody that we not only went over time, but but we actually did our full hour because I wanted to give her the time. But I also I want to thank you all for putting up with the craziness of, of, of the technical difficulties. And this is Creator Talk. I'm Brian Thomas Schmidt. I'm the author of Shortcut, which if you go to my profile and you click my link and then go to the first tab, you can buy my book right now for 99 cents on Kindle this week. It just came out on audiobook, so I'm celebrating that release. So feel free to take advantage. It is a thriller. Kind of like The Martian meets Goodwill Hunting meets X Files. Um, it is uh, very, uh, there's real math in it, real science, and real space travel stuff, and some pretty cool um, science behind it. So check it out. Uh, please go check out Rosemary's books. She's got several out there. She's got eight, uh, eight of them out there. Um, if you like women's yeah. fiction, she's got that for you. She's also got the paranormal mysteries things going on. She's got a lot of stuff. There's more to come. So thank yeah. you for being here. Thank you for liking the show. Thank you for um, supporting us and listening to us talk. And we will be back tomorrow night with Alisa Hughes, 7 o'clock U.S. Central Time on Creator Talk. Thank you. All thank right, that's, you. That's it, Rosemary. Have a good night. Thank you. Nice. I'll look forward to seeing you in Vegas. Be sure and say hi. Yes. Yes, me too. Take care. I'll be at the uh, sign-up table at the beginning of the, the oh, run. So. So, so will I. Come find me. So I'll see you there. Oh, good. Cool. All cool. right, good. I'll see you there. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming. Take all right, care. Take care. take care, everybody. I'm going to close it now. I'll come back later for hanging out. Thank you all.